Beautiful looking fish. Sean's doing all the flashing work. <laughs> Bullshit, it can't be right. Yeah, he didn't like that very much. It can't get much better than that. You, you. What we're here today for is the Great Australia Shark Count. It's an initiative of the AUF to um, try and document how many sharks are out there. I'd rather be diving with sharks than making a speech, but uh, speeches are a necessary evil. We do have an opportunity today to make a difference. That's how politicians do it. Make a difference for not only us, but for future generations. Stumbled enough, so uh, with that I'll officially um declare the Australia, Great Australian Shark Count open. And it really has been excellent for divers. It's really positive news rather than the negative stuff that historically we've had an awful lot of. So it's showing us in a good light, trying to make a difference for our sport and for sharks. So with that, obviously we've got some media here today. This is the guys from Spearing the Menu, which is a group of divers in Victoria who are doing a diving cooking show. They've done one pilot and the Great Australian Shark Count is another. So they'll be following us today. Anyway. And it was finally time to get into it. The Spearing the Menu team were lucky enough to be going out with some real legends of freediving. John Featherston, Adam Smith, Dave Welsh, accompanied by Mark Spencer, a local photojournalist and scuba diver. John, a local diver from Bulgulga, knows the solitary islands like the back of his hand, and we headed straight to Southwest Solitary Island Marine Park. Adam and Dave, two key figures in the organisation of the project, were keen to check here first, where there was a great chance of swimming with the grey nurse. It was also a lot of fun to take the two old V17 Haynes Hunters out for a run. Solid sundry for miles. Shane, turn. So sit back, get comfortable, and let's see if the boys can say hello to a shark or two.
there's been a lot of misunderstanding, figures such as 250, 300, 500 grain earth sharks, and what we're hearing from divers is they believe there's a lot more. Well now it's our opportunity to try and quantify and use science to prove that there's more or find out that there's less. So it's not just about grain earth sharks, there's 10 species of sharks and the ones that you're likely to see in this waters, and I'll encourage you to have a look at the posters, are grain earths, Port Jacksons, Wobbegong, you might if you're lucky see a great white or a tiger and we're also interested in sightings of other sharks that are not on the sheet. So you might see a hammerhead or something else unusual. We had a skin diver report a, uh, a zebra shark in Sydney recently, so any, a leopard shark, sorry, so anything's possible. Right, we're here with Adam Smith on the first of the dedicated shark counting days. Adam, how did you go today? It's a fantastic day. We had clear water, 20, 25 metres. We had plenty of sharks yeah. and quite a lot of participation. I haven't heard how everyone went today because we had yeah. people spread over about 80 kilometres of coastline. Yeah. The results will come in over the next couple of days. Yeah. But from our boat, uh, highest individual got 23 grain earth sharks, yeah. four wobbegongs, one whaler and a blind shark. Yeah. And most people got between Oh, grain earth was the most common sighting, yep. 10 to 15 sightings of grain earth. Okay, and what are you hoping to achieve with the Great Australian Shark Count? Well, it's a fantastic project that's raising the profile of spearfishers and skin divers. They're focusing on something that's of interest to not only the community but government agencies. Yep. We don't know whether sharks are decreasing or increasing. We believe they're probably increasing. Yep. Okay, well, and this has been a pretty successful um, community-based project so far? Mate, you can't speak highly enough about the participation, not yeah. only from the divers, but government has become a partner with us, yeah. so have quite a lot of traditionally conservation groups, our yeah. enemies, groups yeah. like Reef Check, Reef Watch have come on board and said, this is a good project, we'll work with yeah. you on it. That's great, so it's breaking down boundaries as well. It's breaking down boundaries. We've got over 3,000 sightings already, which has exceeded expectations. It's now the largest shark community program in the world. Yep. And a lot of the ones that we're benchmarking against have been going for 10 years. We've been going five months. Yep, unreal. Now, you're president of the Australian Underwater Federation. Can you tell us a little bit about the AUF and sure. what it does? AUF has a mission, bringing sport, conservation and awareness to the underwater world. Yep. It's involved spearfishing, underwater hockey, fin swimming, photography and anything that you do underwater. Now, in the past, spearfishing has received a fair bit of negative publicity. Um, where, where's the AUF heading at the moment in terms of trying to turn that around? Yeah, it's very unfortunate and a lot of that stems from activities that were undertaken 40 or 50 years ago that were highly publicised. Yeah. The Ben Crop, Shark, Hunter era, catching huge Queensland groper. But yeah, that was a different generation. And yeah. now we have bag limits, size limits, marine protected areas, and we are the most sustainable form of catching fish. We're selective, we only take what we need, we can pick the size of the species and we take a very small catch. Yep, so where we're heading, we're promoting our activity as the most sustainable form of fishing. Yep. Well grain earth sharks, um, they occur uh, around the world, um, basically in coastal areas and we find them on the east coast of Australia um, their biology is such is that they are a bottom dwelling shark, they live close to the bottom of the, uh, of the sea and they uh, form aggregations, they migrate along coasts and um, they are potentially quite susceptible to fishing pressure because people know where they tend to aggregate. So that's one feature of their biology that uh, uh, makes them s somewhat susceptible to being overfished. Another feature is their reproductive biology which is really quite strange in that unlike other sharks which may have um, reasonably large numbers of offspring, they might have um, maybe 20 or 30 pups, the grain earth sharks only ever have one or two at a time and in fact they have this weird behaviour whereby one of the sharks actually in the womb of the mother will actually consume the other one so it's uh, quite a cannibalistic sort of a behaviour from something that hasn't even been born yet. And because there are only a small number of sharks that are actually born, that's another feature that makes them quite susceptible to uh, overfishing. So what, what is their um, status at the moment? 
they're considered, they're, they're actually uh, listed or scheduled under legislation as being critically endangered on the east coast of New South Wales, yeah. or the east coast of Australia. Yeah. How long have they been protected for? They've been protected in New South Wales since 1984. Yeah. Yeah. So there's very little fishing pressure at the moment, um, but, they're, but they're still considered critically endangered. Uh, is it just because of the fishing pressure before 1984 that they're still in trouble, or is there something else that's going on to um, keep their numbers down? Well, because of their reproductive biology, because it is so slow, being fished fairly heavily up until 1984 has meant that it's taken quite a long time for the numbers to become re-established. Yeah. So fishing pressure now tends to be what we call incidental pressure, yeah. where a fish might be caught accidentally. Yeah. So there's nobody who's actually going out and legally targeting these yeah. species. Yeah. You were involved in the shark canning day today, how'd you go? Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we, w we went to South Solitary Island and um, we dived at a place called the Manta Arch, yeah. which is a well-known aggregation site, yeah. and uh, it's in a depth of about 25 metres. Yeah. The water clarity was superb, yeah. you could see from the surface well to the bottom, and we counted approximately 16, 16. grey nurse sharks, including yeah. some little ones and yeah. some, some big mummers, some, some big yeah. females. Yeah. So it was a very exciting day, we got yeah. good counts and we got some good photographs as well. Up where we dived at Northwest Solitary, the, all the, the big sharks seem to be females as well. Is there some, are, are all the big ones females or can the males get as large as the females? The females do tend to be larger yeah. and um, yeah, so when you see a really big grey nurse shark, generally you, you can be assured it'll be a female. And those scars that we saw on the backs of the heads of the sharks, are they um, mating wounds or? They could well be. Yeah. They get a bit. Um, they get a bit aggressive. Apparently, yeah, I have, I've never seen them mate, <laughs> but um, I don't know that I'd want to be around when yeah. they do. Actually. <laughs>